Here's a pre-recorded conversation with the Daily Interlake's own Fritz Neighbor, where we discuss the hype surrounding this year's Grizzlies football team, the best playmaking QBs in Grizz history, and look at which opponent is the biggest test left in the Grizzlies' quest for an undefeated regular season and more. Make sure to follow Fritz on Twitter, at Fritz underscore neighbor, and keep an eye out for his football preview capsules on the Grizz and the Bobcats Fridays in the Daily Interlake to get ready for game day. I learn a lot in those capsules. There's no doubt about that. Here's the conversation with Fritz. Hope you enjoy. So, get it started. The Grizz, they racked up all sorts of preseason accolades, and now they're a top three team every week in the polls. This team has a lot of hype surrounding them. How does this uh, team compare to other teams in the past as far as the hype, and is there teams that come to mind that have had this level of hype at this point in the season? I guess when I think about it, I I covered the Grizz on a daily basis at the Missoulian for – I guess, nine years. And toward the end of Bobby Hawk's first tenure, which was um, 03 through 09, the, the 07, 08, 09 teams are really good. Um, two of them went unbeaten into the playoffs. The other one just lost one game. Uh, 07, they were unbeaten and lost at home. I think a lot of people, well, I know at least one player, thinks that was their best team ever. Um, but they got upset at home by an option team. The 08 team, minus all the seniors from 07, uh, beat everybody except Richmond in the final. And then the 0-9 team um, had a lot of experience and a lot of great players. You know, by the end of that 0-9 season, going into 0-10, there was nine players, nine Grizz in the NFL. Oh, wow. Really good teams. And, uh, you know, right there, um, I think Bobby Houck has built this program back to that 0-7 level. I didn't like that 0-7 team as much as 08 and 9 because they didn't score a lot. They just had a great defense. This – this team also has a great defense. Mm-hmm. It's a 2022 team. Pretty spectacular defense. Definitely. Um, I think the offense might be better than 07 just because Lucas Johnson has been such a great fit, a quarterback. Yeah, well, I'll, and well said. I was going to say it's kind of interesting you say that, how they had all this veteran leadership, and then it transitioned into more success. It does look like that could happen again. They have all these senior guys, veteran guys, and now the young crop might just keep it going next year. So, no, it's, they're setting themselves up for a good run. Speaking of Johnson, just to jump around here, I heard uh, Marty Morningway, Grizzlies commentator, former Grizzlies QB, he compared Johnson to Patrick Mahomes for his ability to throw across his body and Steve Young for his playmaking ability. I know it's a little bit of high praise, hyperbole and all that, but speaking of Johnson, kind of where do you rank him among other great playmaking QBs in Grizz history and kind of who are some of the best that come to your mind when you think of all-time greats? Well, the obvious best one in Grizz history is Dave Dickinson. Yep, yep. Who got him their first national title and was undersized, but just a spectacular player with, uh, uh, you know, not great breakaway speed, but he always made a positive game and he had to scramble and he just knew every, where every receiver was. Uh, after that, I'd, I'd probably go Craig Oaks, who took him to the 04 game where they lost. Um, Johnny Edwards needs to be in there just because they, if, if not, no other reason, he was very mobile. But if for no other reason than he was the quarterback of the 01 championship team. Oh, okay, yeah. That's and, uh, you know, Lucas is really talented. I'm struck by – I've watched him play three or four times now. And uh, he's had some throws where, where uh, the ball hasn't been close to anybody. And you go, huh, well, he's not, uh, he's not really on today. And then at halftime, he's either 14 for 14 or 14 for 18. Um, he just quietly kind of gets it done through the air. And then, you know, his running ability is pretty spectacular. It's a big kid. Yeah. I think uh, you mentioned last week how he was the player of the game in San Diego State's bowl win last mm-hmm. year. Um, you know, I think that's the way, uh, the way of the world. You can be a FBS standout one, one season and come down. Bobcats have done the same thing, by the way, um, and be a standout FCS the next. Yeah. No, that's a great comparison. I was kind of thinking – in future shows, that'd be something to jump into, but I'm glad you made the comparison. It's interesting. Chambers kind of doing something, something similar, going from Wyoming to the Bobcats, then Johnson, San Diego State to the Grizz. Yeah, no, it is interesting. And, you know, just to kind of jump around some more, speaking of the talent level in the FCS, and then we'll get back to the Grizz remaining schedule, kind of talk about that a little, see how that looks down the road. But I've, I've been thinking the FCS has been playing some unreal competitive football Weber State recently had a big win over a FBS opponent. Last year, the Grizz beat the Washington Huskies. And now James Madison University, I don't know if you've been following that at all, but 
they're like the 30th ranked team in the nation right now. They just jumped from the FCS to the FBS, throw it in there. Deion Sanders in Jackson State, they landed the number one recruit in the nation at the F, and he went to an FCS school. So that kind of all being said, do you think this is the most loaded era of FCS football or, is, or does anything else come to mind? No, I, I kind of think that way too. I, there was a time where the Big Sky Conference had Boise State and Nevada, um, two teams that really did well in the jump. Nevada jumped in 91, I think. Boise State and Idaho both jumped in 96. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's uh, that much talent around, really. It's, it's at a high point, partly because the transfer portal is just so yeah. wide open right now. Kids can go, which I support, by the way. You know, um, shouldn't be just coaches that can just jump jump from team to team. Players should be, be able to as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I just think it's a really talented level, I think, the fact that the big sky added all these teams made it a lot deeper and tougher. Um, when we talk about how this Grizz team compares, compares really well to 07 08, but you know what? The league got tougher. It's tougher now than it was in 07 08. I think Bobby Hawk might disagree with me, but it's, that's my opinion. Yeah, no, I think all great points. The transfer portal thing really kind of jumps out too, because I actually was thinking how I think the FCS has really benefited from that. I keep hearing the Grizz's opponents. They're like, this guy's a transfer from this school. This So you, they got a lot of guys who bounce back, and they're bringing that talent with them, and it shows. So, no, I think it's been a lot of fun to watch, and I think it makes what the Grizz are doing that much more kind of the hype around it. To me, at least, it, it's made it really almost bigger than maybe – I mean, I haven't been to cover for that long. But to me, it seems big. That's all I'm saying. It's like the competition's there. You're saying the big sky's there. And when the FCS as a whole is playing tough, it's like they get to the playoffs and make a run. That's going to be special. So I'm excited for that. We'll kind of wrap things up here with um, – I just want to look at the Grizzlies schedule down the stretch. They're on a bye right now, but they have some tough opponents coming up. They have Weber State and Sacramento State, who have both pulled off wins over FBS opponents this year, and, of course, the Bobcats. So, that being said, looking at the schedule, games ahead, who do you think is that big test or what teams lay ahead? Because, I mean, the undefeated season is in the realm of possibility. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know how likely it is, just because yeah. that road schedule is pretty tough. Tough, yeah. Um, Idaho's no, no prize. They seem to be playing a lot better under their first year coach, just like Idaho State did last week. Um, but uh, you said it: Weber State and Sac State on the road. Uh, I don't. I think we're still at one loss for the Sac State coach in his tenure there. He's just he's winning ball games. You always wondered when it was going to happen down there because it's a big school. It's in a great recruiting area. Why isn't Sac State better? Now, guess what? They're better. It came. <laughs> a lot better. And, uh, in fact, one of the best players transferred to uh, um, Northern Colorado oh. and made them a lot better. So, yeah. um, if they can get through Sac State and Weber State, man, that then they're for real. Yeah. yeah. Not that they're not really good right now. I think they are really good, but it goes back to my point. The league's tough. It's gotten tougher. And uh, those two road tests back-to-back -back will be a real – barometer for how uh how how pine the sky the grizz get yeah no that, that there's a lot of depth in the conference so it's like you said if they can make it through those two the momentum's going to be peaking at the right time and maybe they can carry that down the stretch and close it out with the win over the bobcats it is going to be a, it's going to be a challenge it's going to be tough but i think that's a good way to put it and i think the idaho thing's interesting just because they're coming off a game where they should have beat idaho state you know, pretty significantly, and then they had a tough test. So you do want to bounce back from that little added pressure. I'm not saying it's going to get to them, but it's just another one on the calendar. It's a got to take care of business. So, no, definitely great point there. Um, yeah. There's anything else you want to add, Fritz? Grizz talk and any FCS stuff? Uh, Big Sky, just throw it out there. If not, we're good to go. Well, talking about um, Montana's game last week, I think I mentioned leading up to it, the weird stuff happens in Pocatello. I did see you say that in an article. Mm -hmm. I see. I saw Ryan Bagley break his arm there. I saw Cole Burke was fumbled into the end zone. Um, disputed, but they called it a fumble in the end zone for a touchback, just like Lucas Johnson did last week. Um, I've seen uh, – well, I didn't see it, but uh, they, had, they had a couple of kids get arrested getting off the bus coming back from Pocatello in 07, I believe. It all kind of blends together. So, you know. Yeah. Um, when you end it with that story, you're like, yeah, it just does seem like every time they weird. go there, it gets a little funky. So Yeah, weird, weird stuff happens. And, you know, so when you look at it, yeah, they won 20 to 20. It, it should have been 35 to 6 before the fumble. Uh, then they gave up a couple late scores. But they got back with a W. Um, all the players are still in uniform this coming week. 
Uh, that's a good trip. That's important. Yeah, and they got the W. Like you said, you come back undefeated, and then you have a bye to kind of recoup. So there's all that. No, definitely. Well, thank you, Fritz. Great stuff today. Everybody, make sure you're checking out Fritz's content in the Daily Interlake. And follow Fritz. Fritz, if you want to plug your Twitter, is it Fritz underscore neighbor, I believe. That's it. All right, there it is. Thanks again, Fritz, and thanks everybody checking it out. All right, reminder, that's at Fritz underscore neighbor on Twitter. Make sure to give him a follow. Thanks again for the time there. Hope everyone enjoyed that. Like I said earlier, a walking encyclopedia of Montana Grizzlies knowledge. I've learned a lot from this guy, and I hope you have too. Before we wrap this thing up, I want to give a special thanks to Black Diamond Mortgage for their support and remind everyone listening that this episode was brought to you by nomad voted the flathead's best manufacturer nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission focused custom vehicles nomad a montana-based company making a global impact nomad has worked with nasa and various branches of the united states military so you know nomad is a name you can trust with your manufacturing needs For more info, visit www.nomadgcs.com. That's www.nomadgcs.com.